Hello, and welcome to Family Lifestyles. I'm LaToya Drake, your Barron County Cooperative Extension Service Agent for Family and Consumer Sciences, the longest title ever. And I'm here today with Janelle Jones, so excited to be here with her. She is a part of Legacy Dairy, and she's gonna tell us more about that. Um, most milks in stores nowadays is not local. And that's surprising for folks to hear because it looks like, you know, it would just be local because it's on the shelf. There's so much milk, it's cheap, but it's not local. And sadly, many Kentucky dairy farms are disappearing. But in the wake of disappearing dairy farms, Legacy Dairy is thriving and bringing us fresh and local uh, milk to our community. And we're really appreciative of that. Uh, we're gonna talk more about Legacy Dairy as well as milk nutrition. And we're gonna make some ice cream during this episode of Family <laughs> Lifestyles because surveys say ice cream is America's favorite dessert. The average American eats about a ton of ice cream in their lifetime. That's enough ice cream to fill three beds of pickup trucks in a lifetime. So that's almost six gallons of ice cream a year and roughly an ice cream cone every other day. My husband definitely eats more ice cream than that <laughs> even. So Janelle, you're here with us. You're with Legacy Dairy. Yes. This is a family dairy, right? Yes, um, it is my husband, Doug, and myself and my daughter, Allie, who mm -hmm. will be 21 on Monday, mm -hmm. and our son, Jagger, who is 16. So right now we're doing all of the milking of the cows, taking care of the cows, processing the milk, bottling the milk, putting the labels on the jugs, delivering it. Um, Just the four, your family's doing that? Yes. How long has your family been in the dairy business? Um, well, this dairy we kind of got from um, my husband's family. It was his uncle's dairy, um, and we um, bought that originally with one of Doug's brothers, and they milked for a while. They both had outside public jobs as well, mm -hmm. um, and his brother decided just to go into beef, and so we milked a little bit longer at the dairy before we ended up just closing because it was just too much to try to juggle. Um, then we just, it just kind of sat there and didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. um, and then we looked at trying to possibly sell it. And that was right about the time that things were starting to go downhill for so dairy farmers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, maybe even a little bit earlier than okay. that. Um, and we had a few people come and look at it. We had somebody who wanted to buy it. He already had a plan laid out. Um, but when he contacted the milk companies to have somebody to purchase the milk, nobody would pick him up because we did, he didn't have anybody to buy the milk, so he couldn't buy the dairy. Mm -hmm. So there we were kind of stuck, um, paying every month, making a payment on this dairy, and mm -hmm. we couldn't really do anything with it. Um, and about that same time, a friend of ours in Alabama had reopened her grandfather's dairy and had built the processing plant and was doing um, her own milk and was having phenomenal success. Uh, Doug went to visit a couple of times. Allie went down um, to visit and see how her setup was and just a lot of talking about it and praying. And we just kind of decided this was something that we wanted to do. And it took us... 18 more months from that point to even get the business plan together, mm -hmm. um, find a bank that was willing to finance it. That was another problem. Um, two banks that Doug went to, um, as soon as they knew it was m m for dairy, oh, yeah. they were just like, sorry, you know, we're not interested in putting any money into anything dairy right now, the way it looks. Um, we so went, had some barriers to getting yeah, this off the ground. Yeah. Um, Doug was at that point kind of ready to just throw in the towel and say, forget it. Um, we had a lot of people telling us to go to the People's Bank and talk to Terry Bunnell. Yeah. Um, and so um, we went together and we talked to him and we lined out the plan and just kind of what our dream is um, and kind of why it's a legacy dairy that, you know, this has been in Doug's family and, you know, it's Allie, um, it's what she wants to do. It's her passion with agriculture and mm -hmm. we just wanted to do something with this. And we're trying to make lemonade out of lemons too. Yeah. You have um, a you have a mortgage you're paying on a dairy yeah. and still you gotta pay it. <laughs> yeah, so we gotta... need some money coming in. Yeah. <laughs> um so um he believed in our dream mm -hmm. when nobody else would and he got us the money that we needed and I mean there were tons of of hoops that you have to jump through um just with all the red tape um, even compared to um 
our friend in Alabama, the regulations for Kentucky. Probably for processing or Yeah, different. it's while the federal guidelines are the same for everybody, each state kind of interprets it a little differently. Okay. So we have to do a lot more kind of than what she had to do there, even in our cleaning process and all that. It's a lot more involved. It takes us longer to clean the equipment after we bottle than it does to process it and bottle it. Which is good to know, as someone who enjoys your milk, that there is a great cleaning process. Oh, yeah. And it's going to be, you know, it's not going to get you sick. It's going to be okay to drink. It's safe to drink. It's clean. It tastes wonderful. Okay. Um, where are you guys located? We are on Goodnight High School Road, okay. right okay. in High School. Um, we're the old Glen Jones Dairy for people that are familiar with that area. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a Cave City mailing address, but we're actually in the heart of high school right there. Okay, my, I have some family from high school and grew up going to Queen's Chapel out that way. You know oh that? my gosh, yeah, that's right by my in-laws. Yes. <laughs> I know and right where probably know is. some of my people out there. Yeah. Um, we, so there's different types of dairy cows, right? Yes. What <laughs> types of dairy cows do you guys have? We are milking right now primarily brown Swiss cows, mm -hmm. um, which have a higher um, richer, fire, higher fat content oh, that's in why their milk, so, so it makes that milk a lot richer. Uh -huh. So you don't have any other types of cows that you also milk? Um, they have a red and white um, Holstein right now mm -hmm. that we're milking, but it's primarily the brown Swiss. Okay, so then I know your milk is different from typ typical store-bought milks. How is that milk different? Oh. <laughs> Well, besides the fact that it's local mm -hmm. and you know that you're supporting um, a local business, small business, and a, a dairy farmer. A local family. Yes. <laughs> a, an educator and teacher. You know, you know where your milk is coming from mm -hmm. when you buy our milk. Um, and, you know, down the road we do have plans to do some more agritourism stuff mm -hmm. where people can be visiting our farm. But even right now when we're not to that point, you can contact us on Facebook and make arrangements if you want to bring your kids out to see the cows. You can see the cows that are being milked, where, you know, that are given the milk that you're you drinking. You see that they're happy cows. Yeah, they are happy cows. Uh, they're big spoiled babies. They're big pets. Um, our milk also is pasteurized, just like the milk that you get at the store. And what that means is the killing of germs for 15 seconds for um, 165 degrees. Is right. what, is we red, actually red. do 150 degrees okay. for 30 minutes. Oh, so longer time, yes. lower temperature to... It's killing all the potentially harmful bacteria yes. that would be in your milk. Oh, cool. But our milk is not homogenized. Okay. Now, when they homogenize milk, they're taking those, um, the fat. fat, and they're breaking it down mm -hmm. and putting it, making it more into the milk solid. Um, more consistency, right? Right. Um, we don't do that with our milk. So when you get our milk, you're going to have to shake it up mm -hmm. because when it sits in your fridge, you're going to see that the cream is going to separate and rise to the top. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to have to shake that back in or when you pour it out, it's just going to be real chunky. Mm -hmm. But because it's not homogenized, it has that richer flavor. And that it does cream at the not, top is, yeah. is good stuff. <laughs> it does not taste like um, the milk that you get at the store. And that's kind of been my favorite part at the farmer's markets is talking to the customers and being able to meet them. And a lot of them grew up on dairy farms or their grandparents had a farm and they would go visit. And they talk about, you know, dipping the milk out and dipping the cream out. And just them sharing those memories. I feel like our product is taking them back to their childhood. It to, is. you know, I just, that I love that. appreciation <laughs> of local and fresh milk. And we're gonna continue this conversation on Family Lifestyles with Janelle Jones in just a minute, so join us. When I was a kid, I wanted to be just like Cal Ripken. It's definitely humbling to know that now people are calling me a hero. Instead of finding the IED with my metal detector, the IED found me first, and that resulted in double above knee amputations. It's hard to describe the feeling of meeting somebody that you've always wanted to be like. There are people now that are looking up to you for their inspiration and to be their role model. Visit saluteheroes.org to learn more. Hello, 
And welcome back to Family Lifestyles. So glad to be here. I'm your Barron County Cooperative Extension Service Agent for FCS, or Family and Consumer Sciences. And I'm here today with Janelle Jones, and she's with Legacy <laughs> Dairy. We're so happy to have her. We've been talking about her family farm and the legacy that she's leaving in our community with their fresh and local creamy milk. Uh, what I wanted to ask you about in that conversation is um, how are you guys inspired during these difficult times in the dairy industry? What made you get into the milk business when everyone else was <laughs> failing? Well, as we had talked about, um, we just were kind of stuck and we had to find a way to make mm -hmm. lemonade out of the lemons that we had. Um, we did spend a lot of time praying about this mm -hmm. and I do feel like God's hand has been in this the whole time, even to show us like you can't sell it, you're going to have to do something else and getting us to the point where in our heads we could be like, okay, this is the path we're supposed to take. Um, and I was telling you, you know, like it was like 18 months, getting the business plan together, trying to get it financed. And Stress and hard times. Yeah, yeah. And Doug was just like all the time like, oh, one more month, we'll be ready to go. One more month. And, and it would be another month. And there were still more hoops that we had to jump through and little things. And, you know, we're already making payments. And money was about to run out. And I'm sure God was just laughing at my prayers, honestly, because I'd be like, seriously, like, I know it's in your timing but oh my gosh like how much longer do we have to wait you know we're so ready for this to happen and he knew where he was going to drop us in this and he dropped us right at the beginning of the COVID craziness and the quarantines mm -hmm. um, and it was a blessing for us because the store there in Heisville, Phillips IGA, mm -hmm. had no milk. And so they were buying initially all the milk that we were producing. Wow. And we were selling from the dairy, just people would drive up, give us their order, and we would do the milk, and we were doing all the mass social distancing. So you distancing. were dealing in milk. Yeah, we were just peddling out yes. <laughs> all the milk. But, I mean, we had so many people that even were just excited about it to begin with. When we had first put out our post coming soon, where do you want to where do you want to see our milk? Within 72 hours, we had 20,000 views. Like we were just blown away by that. And I mean, God has just continued to bless us through all of this. Yeah. And I think that's just really what inspires us that you know that through it all, like we've had we've grown in having our faith and putting faith over fear in all of this and it seems to what god has for you is for you right yeah so it's awesome to see your local dairy thrive so much and in the state of coronavirus as we stand six feet apart yeah. in, <laughs> in this building and um you know people saw the the food disappear from the shelves and so it's really important that we shop local and support places like the farmers market and Absolutely. support local farmers and support support local dairies because these are folks we can depend on in our community who will help out when you know times are hard Absolutely, because we we are family you know here so it's important to support our family and our farmers here what new products will you guys ha be having soon with legacy dairy Ooh, <laughs> in about a month doug says <laughs> okay so that could be six yeah, months it better not be <laughs> so, i hope god's it's, timing it's, is is quick on it's this all right <laughs> we are gonna have chocolate milk we've already perfected oh, our yeah. recipe okay <laughs> I think you got to sample one of the options. It was super good, super <laughs> yummy. I'm excited to try it. Super creamy milk. Yeah. Just shaking it up. You, it's like, uh, what something I wanted to mention too. 65% of adults and and uh, across the world are lactose intolerant. Do you know that? And I find this milk easier to tolerate as someone who struggles with milk issues myself. That's not doctor's proven, but it's something you can try. I also love to cook with your milk mm -hmm. and do different things with it. And speaking of that, ice cream. <laughs> and this is what we're talking about today, because even ice cream is a, a dessert, it's still a part of the dairy group in my plate here, right? <laughs> so it's still, you can still be allowed some servings of ice cream. So you're going to make some ice cream for us, right? I am. With um, legacy milk. With our milk, mm -hmm. yes. Um, we're just going to do a basic vanilla ice cream recipe, mm -hmm. but I'm going to tell you how you could enhance that even more to make it butter pecan. Oh. Um, and what I have for us today is our finished product is actually butter pecan. Oh, you're fancy. <laughs> we are fancy. Um, and it's so easy. Um, now, most of you, oops, sorry. <laughs> oh, grab it. Are used to using these. 
What is that? This is like the old time, oh, like fancy. when people would make, you could crank. This one doesn't actually have a crank. You can just plug it in, but it I like that it, it cranks itself, but I like that it looks old fashioned. Yeah. Um, so a lot of people make their ice cream at home with these and you have to have ice. It makes a good portion too, right? Yes, this one will make six quarts. Oh, so you're like making ice cream if yeah. you wanted to. But you could change your, you know, do your recipe, break it down. If you just want to do a quart or two quarts, just break down. Yeah. Those um, those ingredients. Um, so while most people are familiar with those, the one that we're going to use today is one that a friend let me borrow. And what I like about using this kind of ice cream maker is you don't have to mess with all the ice on the outside and the rock salt and keeping an eye on it and adding mm. more ice and adding more rock salt. So we're just going to make a quart. So all of the ingredients that we're using today with those teaspoons mm -hmm. and all that is for a quart of ice cream. Yeah, and to give a plug, 4-H has a really good recipe publication on uh, ice cream in a bag. And you could Ooh. use the Legacy Milk and you can make that ice cream that way too. Yes, that would be awesome. Uh -huh. um, so what we're going to start off with is three cups of our Legacy Milk. And because it's not homogenized, you want to make sure that you shake it up good. Uh, before you open it and pour it out. So we're going to do three cups. There's one. So when was that milk? Two. How long ago did that come from its source? Mm, this was milked last week. Mm -hmm. The um, expiration date is July 31st. Um, so it would, it was probably bottled on Saturday. Okay, so this will air um, next week sometime. So this was bottled three days ago or so, four yeah. days ago. So fresh from the cow, you know yes. where it comes from, different from your store-bought <laughs> milk. That's just awesome yes. to see. And we just finished having our milk stress tested mm -hmm. at Bluegrass Dairies, and our milk um, shelf life has been extended to um, 18 days instead of oh. just two weeks. So we're excited about that because that makes it fresher for a longer period of time. Yeah. Which is different from, yes, what you buy on the shelf. Uh -huh. Okay, now we're also gonna add um, three fourths of a cup of granulated sugar. And we have um, a fourth of a can, which is about a fourth of a cup of sweetened condensed milk. And I did not bring a spatula. That so works. Let's get that out. Here's what you got. The best that we can. Oh, that's and make it sweet. Yes. <laughs> and enhance that rich flavor of yeah. milk. Then we've got two teaspoons of vanilla. And I didn't use the imitation, I used the real stuff. And vanilla is the most popular ice cream flavor in America, if you really? didn't know that. I would have thought it would have been chocolate. Mm -mm. <laughs> That's either second or third. Vanilla is most popular. So once you get that stirred up really well, then you're ready to pour it in here. Now with either type of ice cream maker that you're using, you want to keep it the part that you're actually gonna make the ice cream in, in the freezer. Like this has been in the freezer for 24 hours um, because you want that to be good and cold. And you can see all the condensation around the outside of it This is a super right neat now. ice cream Oops. maker that you could use I'm gonna in have to home. order one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm just gonna pour that in there. All right, so she's got this. And we're gonna fit that on there. This is the um, the crank that's gonna yeah the crank gonna mix it all up. I don't have that stuck in there. So today. we're gonna crank this ice cream up on Family Lifestyles, and we'll be back in a moment. Thank you for joining us. Good grief! <laughs> <laughs> Put that in there. Hannah complained of a headache. It was a rhabdomyosarcoma. Within a few days, Hannah was in treatment because we were told that the tumor was very aggressive. St. Jude is an asset to the world. The research that is developed here is offered freely. I think it's the kind of place that could teach the world a couple of lessons about how to treat people. If those lessons could be learned, this world could be a better place. Hello, and welcome back to Family Lifestyles. I'm Latoya Drake, your county agent for Family and Consumer Sciences in Barron County with the Cooperative Extension Service um, of University of Kentucky. 
And I'm happy to be here today with Janelle Jones with Legacy Dairy. <laughs> and we've been talking about their delicious milk. We've also been making some homemade ice cream. And we've been talking about dairy in general, the state of the dairy industry, as well as um, dairy nutrition is what we wanted to bring up next. Dairy nutrition, um, dairy is super nutritious. It's nutrient dense. And especially Legacy Farm whole milk dairy. That's gonna be super nutrient dense. It's gonna have calcium. It's gonna have vitamin D. It's gonna have a variety of B vitamins, including niacin and B12. It's also gonna have vitamin A for healthy eyes and skin and protein, um, as well as phosphorus for building bones. So uh, milk is gonna have a lot of good vitamins and nutrients. Something to consider when um, when drinking your milk and eating dairy products is the serving size. Um, a cup of milk, uh, like legacy dairy milk, this would be a serving size for children. And in a day, they should have about, um, let's see, four and a half or two and a half cups. So that would be four and a half or four, five of these. Sorry, because this is a half cup. So kids could have five of these in a day. And I have had lots of parents tell me that their kids love our milk and they don't want the other milk anymore. I they don't. want the good milk. I don't want the other <laughs> milk anymore either. Um, we were just talking in between segments. I, I have almond juice <laughs> in my smoothie, but I, I do like, the milk. store-bought milk just doesn't taste the same. Yeah. I tried because I will treat myself to like milk and cookies on the weekend after the farmer's market. Mm -hmm. And I tried to buy some and it was not. No. It does, it, I don't even want it anymore. <laughs> but adults... Um, they should have um, uh, three cups a day. So that would be three of these a day. So that's something to consider when you're drinking really nutrient dense milk is to get the appropriate serving size because this has a lot of good stuff in it and you don't want to overdo it because it does have a lot of good stuff in it, like that good fat. We're talking about ice cream. Yes. <laughs> and we know that America's favorite flavor is vanilla followed by chocolate and then strawberry. And it's also not known exactly when ice cream was first made, um, but they believe it evolved during a Roman times when they used to chill wine and other substances <laughs> uh, into slush. They, they, they believe that ice cream evolved during that time. During the reign of Charles I in England uh, in the mid 17th century, a frozen dessert resuming ice cream was served in the royal palace and they did not allow common folks to eat this. So yeah. <laughs> it, was, it, was a, it was a royal thing. There's a variety of frozen desserts beside ice cream. We've got ice cream and that's milk, cream, sugar, and flavorings, and sometimes egg yolks to yes. stabilize it. Um, and when you do that, you'll have to cook that, right? And you'll cook the, do you cook the egg yolks when you do that? One of the recipes that I've done with the other, I didn't cook the eggs. Oh. But I mean, you know, the age the, that I am, I grew up like licking the batter I bowl, too. And, and and I let my kids do that. And I yeah, lived. we'll buy some raw cookie dough and just eat it. And mm -hmm. you know, I know a lot of people won't do that, but you got I, iron bellies. I'm 50. I've survived doing it, so it's oh. all good. <laughs> ice cream to be ice cream. It must have at least 20% of milk solids. I was reading that in a little pub, a 4-H pub about ice cream. There's ice milk. Have you ever had ice milk? No. <laughs> ice milk contains less fat and less milk solids than ice hmm. cream. Um, it may not be lower in calories, so you have to read the labels. And that's important when you're eating dairy is to read the labels to understand your serving size to make sure that you're not overeating. Because dairy is so sweet and so good. It has that lactose sugar in it. Right. And it tastes great. <laughs> so you want to eat a lot of it, but you want to make sure you're getting the proper serving size. I will add. Mm -hmm. Latoya, um, I've had some people that use our milk on the keto diet. Mm -hmm. I really don't know anything about mm -hmm. keto diets, but based on what's on our nutrition label, mm -hmm. um, that's something that's allowable for them. Oh, so it must have less sugar or they just allow themselves to use it as a protein. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, that's something to think about. Different diets, this milk could work. And, and as we discussed, I tolerate it better as someone who has lactose intolerant issues. Mm -hmm. um, I tolerate legacy dairy milk better than I do store-bought milk. And that's probably because it's not homogenized. Because mm -hmm. when you drink homogenized milk, your stomach has to separate that fat back out. Mm -hmm. And you're not having to do that with our milk. Oh, because it's already separated. Right. Um, another frozen dessert that's not ice cream is sherbet. Mm -hmm. um, and sherbet is popular among many folks. And it's like more fruity flavor. Um, sherbet has um, 
Only a small amount of milk solids. I didn't realize sherbet had milk in it, but it I is creamy-ish. <laughs> um, frozen yogurt, that's milk-based, we know. And it, it is made from low-fat yogurt with flavored with fruits or other stuff. And then something else that's a frozen dessert is sorbet. And that doesn't have milk in it at all, but they're pretty tasty too. Yeah. I prefer ice cream overall. But to reiterate, it's important that you read the nutrition labels. So you've got some ice cream that I is made. I do. We're going to pretend that this was in here for about it 25 minutes. It was in here. What are you talking about? <laughs> running. Now, to take it from vanilla to the butter pecan, oh. after you would have gotten this started, you would have melted a stick of unsalted butter in your skillet. And then you're going to add a cup of pecans in there and a teaspoon of kosher salt. Mm -hmm. And you just want to brown those um, and don't do it too long. Like it smells really good when you're doing it. And while it still has that good smell, that's when you kind of want to drain, drain off the butter and stuff from the pecans in your colander and then just hold it. And then the last five minutes that your ice cream's in here, you just add that in to mix it in. Mm. Um, so and turning it from vanilla easy. to butter pecan is really easy. Super easy. And probably just as easy to turn it from vanilla to chocolate or strawberry. Yeah. You just add the different flavorings exactly. into your ice cream. And you can measure the amount of and what you put in it so you know what is in your ice cream rather than the different preservatives that you would get in store-bought stuff, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So thinking about the dairy industry in Kentucky, Barron County, you know this probably, is one of the top producing counties in Kentucky, milk producing. And we're dairy. still not producing what we were even probably five years ago because of what's happened in the dairy industry. Mm -hmm. and, and, this, and this show will be aired in Marion County and Allen County as well. <laughs> also to mention, Logan County is number two, uh, Adair County is number three, Warren County number four, and Christian County is number five in 2020 from the Dairy Facts. Um, we have uh, the total amount of milk produced in uh, Kentucky is 109 million gallons. Wow. That's a lot of milk. And Kentucky is home to about 50,000 dairy cows. Wow. <laughs> a lot of milk still being produced and not as much like because folks are closing down, unfortunately. Yes. <laughs> dairy cows produce on average of 7.2 gallons of milk to, a day. 90.5% um, of all milk produced in 2019 was used and consumed in the form of fluid milk. So folks are drinking more milk than they're eating ice cream even. So let's see this ice cream. Let's get right. some out and see what this looks this like. This is our finished product mm -hmm. with our butter pecan. So we're going to scoop some of that out. Whoops. In here. And I found this cute little bowl at, whoa, at Royal King. Oh. That I just thought went perfect with our ice cream. Oh, so perfect. So I'm gonna let you just I'm take a little sample this. of that and see what you see think. What this tastes like. This, this butter pecan that I'm making a mess ice cream <laughs> with legacy dairy milk. And where are you guys found just a few places as we wrap up? Um, we are currently at the Phillips IGA there in Heisville. What'd you think? Very good. <laughs> we are also at the Zach's Express Minute Mart or T-Mart there um, on Lexington Drive in Barron County. Um, I'm also at the Bounty of the Barrens Market every Saturday. We are in talks with Houchins and hope to be in the three Glasgow Houchins stores very soon. Paradise Point carries our pints, which goes perfect with our breakfast. And I also know that Sabrina is using our milk instead of um, cream, whipping cream, um, in several of her recipes that she's doing there. So just a few places that you can find Legacy Dairy Milk. If you'd like more information about finding that in our community, uh, reach out to their Facebook page or reach out to the Bounty of the Barons Facebook page and shop local. Thank you for watching Family Lifestyles. <laughs>